Good day, church. My name is Ezal Fuyin, and together with my husband and our children, we've been a part of Shofar Stellenbosch for the past six years. So for today's daily encouragement, we'll be looking at Matthew 23. Just to recap on Matthew 22, that was when the, um, Jesus told the parable of the wedding feast and then where he says, many are called, but only a few are chosen. And then there are all these Pharisees in the crowd trying to ask him all these trick questions, but he has a clever answer for all of them. So then we get to um, chapter 23 and Jesus says, um, look at all these Pharisees around you. Um, listen to what they say and do as they say, but don't do as they do. Being a parent, I usually think if, if one of my children actually shouts at the other, I can go and scream and say, stop shouting at your brother. Um, and they might get a fright, but it won't change their behavior. Or if my daughter falls down, I might tell her sister, go and check up and see what's wrong with her. Um, and she might um, go and look and see. But if I don't actually also jump up and just see, see if she's okay or not, I won't teach my daughter to have compassion. So the Pharisees also um, liked wearing all these oversized prayer boxes with scriptures inside of them on their foreheads and on their arms, which sounds quite ridiculous. But in our um, modern day setting, we might um, tune into every weekly cell on Zoom, or you might hand out food parcels during lockdown to some of the needy people, or you may play worship music loudly in your car. And while all those things are honorable things to do, um, we must um, evaluate our hearts and see what the motive is in our hearts. Is it to seek approval of people or to seek approval of God? Another thing the Pharisees liked was all their titles. They liked being called um, a rabbi or teacher. And in today's setting, we might aspire to be called a doctor and a professor or even a Mrs. So-and-so. And even though there's nothing wrong with those titles, it is just what is the motive in our heart? If we do have that title, if we carry that title around, do we look down on people or not? Then if we um, read from Matthew 23, verse 11 and 12, it says, He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself with haughtiness and empty pride shall be humbled, brought low. And whoever humbles himself, whoever has a modest opinion of himself and behaves accordingly, shall be raised to honor. This also reminds me of, of James 4 verse 6, which says, He gives grace generously. God um, opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The best um, example that we ever had of that humble servanthood was Jesus, obviously. He washed his disciples' feet uh, without expecting him to do so. He um, rode on a donkey into Jerusalem instead of a a beautiful royal carriage with, with stunning horses in front. He performed all these miracles and he never wanted um, any credit for, um, for that. He only wanted God to be glorified through that. So it's just so um, yeah, beautiful. Then in um, verse 13 to 36, Jesus then addresses the Pharisees directly. Um, and it actually says he pronounces all, all these seven woes or where it says great sorrow awaits you, you Pharisees. Um, and then he just calls out all these practices that they have. They just had these ridiculous commands and things that they expected the Israelites to do um, or, the, or the Jews to do that, that none of them could actually attain to. They would um, or, um, pay all these tithes on tiny little herds in their gardens, a little bit of mint and dill and all these tiny little things but forget the bigger things of being merciful and being just. Um, they would swear oaths, um, but suddenly they would have to abide by the oath, oath if it was done where the gold is in the temple, not just in the temple, or if that it was where uh, um, there's an offering um, on the altar and not just the altar. It's almost like a child saying, I promise you that I will give you some of my sandwiches at lunchtime, but they cross their fingers. So now it doesn't count anymore. It's ridiculous. Jesus just says, your yes should be yes, your no should be no. So he just calls out these Pharisees and saying, you are being ridiculous. And then he also says, um, you clean your cups on the outside, but on the inside it's dirty. I don't know about you, but I've forgotten a pot of rice a few times on the stove. And it's a mess to try and clean that. It literally takes weeks or days of scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. And I get so tempted to just put the pot back into the cupboard and pretend that everything is fine. I can't ever use the pot again um, before I've actually thoroughly cleaned it. 
He says to the Pharisees, you like whitewashed gravestones, tombstones, all pretty on the outside, but you're dead on the inside. So again, he evaluates their hearts. They all, they all pretty and proud and beautiful on the outside, but on the inside is just a stinking big mess. Um, and it reminds me of how easily um, we can also hide what's actually going on. Maybe during lockdown, you are trying to convince everybody around you that it's going well with your finances or with your relationships, with your marriage, everything is just perfect. Um, but deep down inside, you know that you are maybe fooling your friends and you can fool some of your family members, maybe even your spouse. Maybe you can even try and fool yourself, but you can't fool God. He looks directly inside at your heart and he, um, he sees your heart, he sees the motive of your heart and he sees whether it's, whether it's pure and whether you're honest with him or not. It really um, reminds me of, of Psalm 24, verse 4, where um, David says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself up to falsehood or what is false, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then the um, chapter 23 just ends um, with uh, Jesus that... Um, he prophesies judgment coming over Jerusalem and also that the apostles will be persecuted. So the take home message really of, of Matthew 23 is that God wants us to be humble servants in his kingdom where we really um, only seek his approval and not the approval of others and not titles and things that others try to place on us and where he seeks pure hearts and where we can honestly say that our inside cups also re, um, look the same as our outside cups. Um, and we can just be ourselves, be real and be authentic with others around us and with God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for desiring to have a beautiful relationship with us. Father, thank you for sending Jesus just to um, be the perfect example of being a humble servant in your kingdom, Lord, and just obeying your will. Lord, I pray that you will give us soft hearts, Lord, and teachable hearts where you're able to come and show us um, where there are unpure, unclean things in our hearts, things hiding, um, whether it's unforgiveness or idols or whatever that's, that's there and um, that's hindering our relationship with you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will come and show us those things in our hearts and you will come and um, give us pure hearts. You will come and clean us by your grace, Lord. You will help us to get rid of all those hindrances so that there will be nothing standing in between us, our relationship um, between us and, um, and you, Lord, so that we can be able to hear your voice clearly and that we can walk in your will every day um, and that we can really see your kingdom come to earth. Thank you, Father. Amen. Be blessed. Bye-bye.